This is the story of the Fabergé Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. In June of 2018, Isabel and I toured this amazing palace, taking these photos. In 2006, Victor Vexelberg, the fourth richest Russian oligarch, with a fortune of over $13 billion, decided to create a museum to showcase the Fabergé collection and other 19th century jewelry. He rented the dilapidated Shuvalov Palace and spent the next seven years performing the first comprehensive restoration in the palace's entire 200-year history, creating an incredible showcase. The museum opened in November of 2013. The foundation of the museum came from Bexelberg's purchase in 2004 of the Fabergé collection owned by American billionaire Malcolm Forbes for which he paid $100 million. Adding additional art pieces over the ensuing years, today the museum has more than 4,000 pieces of the highest quality craftsmanship, many of which belong to the Russian imperial family, as well as pieces owned by other kings and queens of Europe. Today, the collection is considered by most to be the largest and most valuable jewelry collection in the world. The uniqueness of the Fabergé collection lies in the fact that it presents all the areas in which the Fabergé company worked, including jewelry, haberdashery, silverware, and religious items. In addition to the works of the Fabergé company, the collection includes works by his contemporaries, Russian jewelers, silversmiths, and gold leaf painting masters from the second half of the 19th and early 20th centuries. For over a century, the name Fabergé has evoked wealth, opulence, and the world's most extravagant Easter eggs. The story began with Tsar Alexander III in 1885. His young wife, Maria Flodorovna, was born Dagmar of Denmark, but was sent away from her family for an arranged marriage to the Tsar of Russia. Feeling alone and in a foreign land, Maria suffered from homesickness and depression. Seeing her sadness, the Tsar commissioned a jeweled egg as an Easter gift for his wife, the very first Fabergé egg. Maria was delighted with the exquisite egg, and so it became a tradition that the eggs would be made, two each year, as gifts for the wives and mothers of the aristocracy. This became a tradition, so that over the next 33 years, 50 Easter eggs were created for the imperial family. All this tradition came to a tragic end, when the 1918 Bolshevik Revolution closed in on the Romanovs. As the Tsar's family fled St. Petersburg, the imperial eggs made by Fabergé over the course of three decades were left behind and were confiscated by the looters and eventually scattered across the globe. Over the years, 43 of the 50 have been recovered, with the Fabergé Museum holding nine of these 43 imperial Russian eggs, the largest known single collection. Each egg is a masterpiece of jewelry art, as well as a unique historical monument related to the rule and personal life of the last two Russian emperors, Alexander III and Nicholas II. The small, intricately decorated objects of art remain some of the most exquisite decorative works ever created. The imperial eggs, as they came to be called, were handcrafted using gold, diamonds, and semi-precious stones such as emeralds and pearls. Each of the one-of-a-kind designs features richly pigmented layers of glass enamel, gold leaf, and laced metalwork. Fabergé eggs range in size from about three to up to five inches tall. Each one took about two years to complete. Often they could be opened to reveal a surprise such as a miniature portrait, a clock, or perhaps a tiny automation. In total, there are 15 Fabergé eggs now in the Blue Room of the Shuvalov Palace, as well as a miniature picture frame in the form of a heart, the surprise from the lost mauve egg of 1897. The history of the Fabergé family is fascinating. In 1862, Gustav Fabergé founded his jewelry store in St. Petersburg in Imperial Russia. Though, for the next 23 years, he and his two sons, Parle and Carl struggled to make a living with their work. 
One day, Tsar Alexander III saw some of Paul's work in an exhibition and hired him to make the first Easter egg, and the Fabergé name became important. Once recognition came, the business bloomed. It became so successful that at one time the business filled a five-story building in St. Petersburg with four branches in Russia and one in London. As many as 500 diverse craftsmen were employed creating pieces for royal and public demands. In some ways, the Fabergé owners were ahead of their times. For example, two of their masters were women. The owners designated Fabergé workmasters to personally recruit and train their own teams of artisans, allowing them to set their own production schedules. Fabergé also granted them the right to mark the wares with their own initials. With the 1918 Bolshevik Revolution, the firm closed. However, the name lived on. Two of Gustav's grandsons escaped to Paris, where, six years later, in 1924, they opened their own jewelry store, running it until 1937. It was sold, and since that time, the name has been franchised out to various different firms, including production of perfume, cosmetics, and clothing. The Order of St. George Egg was created in 1916. An enameled white shell is covered by a laurel garland forming frames for paintings of the cross of St. George. The shell is decorated with gold ribbons and bows enameled in the order's colors of black and orange. Like most of the eggs, this one has surprises inside, in this case two medallions tied to the egg with bows of enameled ribbon. Behind the badge of the Order of St. George, a miniature portrait of the Tsar is revealed when a small button below the badge is depressed. A miniature of the Tsarevich, who was also awarded a lower grade of the Order of St. George, is similarly revealed from behind a silver St. George medal depicting Nicholas II, when a second button is depressed. This egg may have been the only one that survived with the royal family. The 72-year-old dowager empress, Marie Fyodorovna, had been separated from the Tsar and his family prior to the revolution, and she was able to escape with the egg in her possession. The 15th anniversary egg was an Easter 1911 gift for Tsaritsa Alexandra Fyodorovna from her husband, Tsar Nicholas II, who had a standing order of two Fabergé Easter eggs every year, one for his mother and one for his wife. The egg is made of gold, green, and white enamel, decorated with diamonds and rock crystal. The surface is divided into 18 panels set with 16 miniatures. The egg's design commemorates the 15th anniversary of the coronation of Nicholas II on 26 of May, 1896. There was no surprise in the egg, contrary to the Tsar's explicit instructions with regard to these eggs. And to this day, nobody knows why not. The orange tree egg is built like a tree with four main branches rising from a golden trunk. These branches divide into smaller branches that hold the nephrite leaves, each finely carved with veining and with a socket at the back into which fits a golden twig. The flowers of white enamel have diamond centers, the buds rose-cut diamonds, and the fruits are pale rubies and champagne diamonds. The top third of the tree contains the movement for the singing bird, which emerges from the top of the tree when a jeweled fruit is pressed. It then moves its head from side to side, flaps its wings, and opens its beak. The bird returns to a gold filigree recess inside the top of the egg. The leaves fit together to disguise the opening when it is closed. The coronation egg is made from gold with translucent lime yellow enamel on a field of starbursts. The concept is a reference to the cloth of gold robe worn by the Tsarina at a coronation. The egg is trestled with bands of greenish gold laurel leaves mounted at each intersection by a gold imperial double-headed eagle enameled opaque black and set with a rose diamond on its chest. This pattern was also drawn from the coronation robe worn by the Empress. A large portrait diamond is set at the top of the egg with a cluster of ten brilliant diamonds. Through the table of the stone, the monogram of the Empress can be seen. Fitted inside a velvet-lined compartment is a precise replica 
less than four inches long, of the 1793 imperial coach that carried the Tsarina Alexandra to her coronation. The miniature is complete with moving wheels, opening doors, actual sea spring shock absorbers, and a tiny folding step chair. The Lilies of the Valley Egg was made in 1898. The egg is covered in pearls and topped with rose pink enamel. The egg is supported by legs of green, green gold leaves. This egg surprise is elevated out of the egg by twisting a gold mounted pearl button. When fully raised, three portraits are visible under the imperial crown set with a ruby. Sir Nicholas II and his two oldest daughters. As an interesting side note, the museum founder, the billionaire Vexelberg, has close ties to the Kremlin. In May, CNN reported that investigators from the Special Counsel investigation have questioned Vexelberg about hundreds of thousands of dollars in payments his company's U.S. affiliate made to the U.S. President Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. In April of 2018, the United States imposed sanctions on Vexelberg and 23 other Russian nationals. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the St. Petersburg Fabergé Museum. On your next trip to Russia, you'll have to decide which of the many museums you'll want to make time for. There's the Hermitage and the Russian National Museum, both of which deserve full day trips. Still, if you can squeeze it into your schedule, the Fabergé Museum is truly a remarkable show. This is one of my older videos. Please subscribe and see my new ones.